their legs are very muscular. Sometimes they're seen with the, uh, most of the times they're seen without a tail. There have been some that have been seen with a tail. And um, do they look like walking alligators? No, they look more like uh, they look more humanoid than that. It's not as reptilian looking as you might think. Okay. Even around their face and stuff, they have around their eyes and their nose, they have very, very fine scales like a snake. So they're very, very flexible. So it's uh, other than them being reptilian, it, you know, and the fact that they have the large claws, you don't have this kind of a, a, a stony or studded skin or anything like that resembling crocodiles or alligators. But you're saying they're more from this planet as opposed to ETs, right? It, it, yes, there's a possibility they could have been evolved here and left the planet a long time ago and may be coming back. And if we're looking at some sort of an, an extraterrestrial force arriving, uh, we can't expect, we can't just jump to the conclusions that they're from off planet. They might present themselves as travelers who originated from Earth a long time ago. What would you say of everything you've investigated is the strangest thing that you've stumbled across? The strangest? Strangest thing in your career. Um, well, I would, um, I would have to say the reptilian humanoids. I just wasn't logically, I just, it, I find it hard to accept. You know, I told you once that I had some sort of a vision or encounter, and I can't even believe my own because I studied the subject for so long that I'm too, right. you know, susceptible to it. I can't believe my own account. Let's put it that way. I think that that's strange to me. You know, it, it even feels odd that I should study it, but still be kind of like questioning the fact that I actually even saw something. You know, it's, it's almost too unbelievable, even though I know it's real. All right, let's go to final calls. Let's go to John, truck driving in Buffalo, New York. Welcome to the show. Hey, John, welcome. Hey, George, thanks for taking my call. Thank you, my friend. Go ahead. I was wondering if your guest could just explain a little bit more about the research you did on the cattle mutilations uh, that you did in the first segment there. Were these the, the same mutilations that Linda Mullen Howe investigated where uh, ranchers found no blood or tire tracks near the carcass and tongues and eyes were removed and organs almost thought to be done with a precision laser um uh, yes. it, it, and you were just and you were just talking about the one of the craziest things you've ever discovered and um i've been listening for 15 years and this is by far one of the strangest things i've ever heard of i'll, I'll listen off the air thanks thanks guys okay john go ahead john. I, don't, I don't know if it's specifically the case that linda moulton howe who's the queen of mutilations and 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 investigating it uh had had done uh, all i can tell you is the the ones that i have seen uh, up close and personal uh, i'll look at the carcass but it'll be sitting there for six weeks no animals have touched it no predators nothing uh, not even birds will stand on the carcass for long, but two, two um, weeks previous, uh, a cow died naturally in a pasture nearby, and it's stripped to the bones. Okay, so uh, these are odd things. When I took the skin samples and put them under a microscope, you can see that some sort of a pulse laser was used uh, because you could see the, the burnt nodules every so often in the line of the cut. Also, the hairs from the cow were actually curled inwards as if a heat was applied like a curling iron, and the tips of the hair uh, uh, glued to the underside. So you can tell it happened when the fat was still fresh and hot. So too many of these things have, uh, have uh, definitely got a serious sign of, 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 of um, science investigation going on. And furthermore, almost everything that's taken from these cows is used to determine all, it's all the sticky stuff. It's all the mucuses from their, their, from their jowls. Their ears even have cerumen in it. The earwax collects parasites. The, the, the mucus collects parasites. They measure what's on the end versus what's leaving off the back end. They compare it. And then they've got some sort of a, a, an idea of what it's doing to the food chain down the line. Let's go to Bobby in Miss uh, Kogi, Oklahoma. Hey, Bobby, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks, George. Uh, my question, i got two of them. The first one is about, uh, I think you were saying you have to be in the southern hemisphere. If I was to say to, to tell us to try to look for Nibiru, um, like you were saying something about in Peru or Brazil or something, that, like what would be the azimuth? 
like the magnetic azimuth and the elevation, like if I was to kind of look at it. And the other question is, um, I heard that like some of the earthquakes and, and some of the rumblings 